Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski. I am the owner of Quality Business Plan, as well as the author of Nike's Beginner's Guide to Financial Analysis 2021, as well as the author of Nike's Financial Report by myself for 2021. And so what I'd like to do today in this video is to give you all some tips and tricks on analyzing Nike's 2021 financial statements, as well as their financial ratios. So the way the video is gonna work is I'm gonna go ahead and give you all a little bit of background about me, who I am, what I do. And from that point, I've picked out one line item from Nike's income statement, as well as one financial ratio that I'm going to give you all some tips and tricks on how I evaluated for my financial reports. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and zip through this little handy dandy PowerPoint presentation I've got concocted for your listening pleasure, as well as viewing pleasure for that matter. All right, so first and foremost, I am a professional financial modeler. I, I do, I love the right business plans um, for small businesses across the country as, as well as around the world. And for those small businesses, I'm always constructing financial models to help them with their financial projections. Um, so that experience has helped um, and you know, comes into play when I write these types of financial reports. And I've, for the last, uh, um, last three or four years, I've been writing financial reports for the top 15 to 20 companies in the U.S. So a little bit of experience in analyzing public companies. Also, I am the author of Beginner's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements and Financial Ratios, which is published on Amazon. I, I do sell quite a bit of those books. So if you're interested in a foundation for income statements, balance sheets, and financial ratios, uh, check out the book. And then finally, I am an adjunct professor and subject matter expert for both business and finance. So I do have a little bit of education behind me. All right. So with that said, let's take a look at Nike. So for Nike in 2021, in their income statement, one of the line items that I found most interesting was their operating expenses. So in 2017, if we take a look at their operating expenses, they're at 11.2 billion. In 18, they're at 12.2, 19, 13.4, at 20, 13.8 billion. And then they come down a little bit at 13.7 billion. So this trend right here really doesn't tell us a whole heck of a lot unless we're gonna be able to compare it to something. You know, it's going up, going up, going up for the last four years and then for the last year, it, it does retreat a little bit. So what I've done in the financial report, I've actually compared this line item with sales. And so when we have that sales, we've got our first good trend, which is that in the last year, their operating expenses in 2020, their, their operating expenses was were 37% of sales. And in the last year, it came down to 30.9%. So what it seems like either A, the organization cut costs, and they're still able to maintain sales or the organization's sales increased dramatically as compared to their operating expenses. Regardless, they are now making more money in sales as compared to operating expenses, which is a fantastic, um, fantastic thing to, for the organization to achieve. However, what is concerning in the last four years from 2017 to 2020, their operating expenses as compared to sales continually increased, which means that the organization A, they had to reduce their prices and they couldn't um, cut their costs or the organization's costs continually to increase at a faster pace as compared to sales. So regardless of what, what was the situation in their, in, in, in their um, competitive environment, the result was that the organization's operating expenses as compared to sales continually increase until 2020, um, until 2020, which is a four year bad trend in my most humble of opinions. So what we can walk away from is either A, in, from 2017 to 2020, either the organization was not able to increase their sales price or they had to reduce it because of the competitive environment, um, or their operating expenses are increasing at a faster pace as compared to sales, which means that they've got a twofold problem that they can't control costs and they can't raise the prices. Fortunately, we do have a start of a good trend in 2021 where they were able to reduce, they, they were able to reduce their operating expenses dollar wise, as well as reduce their operating expenses as compared to sales. So this could be a start of a beautiful trend for the organization. Um, we'll have to wait till future uh, financial statements come out in order to get a better insight into this one. All right, so the next tip is going to be in relation to financial ratios, uh, specifically the total asset turnover ratio. So the total asset turnover ratio, what this tells us is how much the organization is generating in sales in using the, the totality of all of their assets. 
In 2017, the organization's turnover ratio was 1.48. In the next two years, the organization would generate more and more sales as compared to total assets under management, and in 2019 at 1.65. That's a pretty good trend for uh, for the last um, from you know in this three year time span. However, in 2019 to 2020, their total assets jumped up about seven billion dollars. And when that happened, from that point in time, we now have a trend for the total asset turnover from 1.19 to 1.18. So it went from 1.65 to 1.19 to 1.18. This tells us this is a bad trend. Because in the last three years, the organization has used their total assets less efficiently to generate sales. As this trend continues, if this trend continues, then they are continually less efficient with their total assets in regards to generating revenues for the organization. Not a great feat for a well uh, for a multinational company that is in their mature phase of their business cycle. Not very impressed in my, mo again, most humble of opinions. So good thing is that their assets under management is increasing. You know, it is going up, up and up and up um, for the last four years. So that, that is a good trend. However, um, the poor trend is that they are becoming less efficient. So that tells me that, you know, the more assets they, they have under management, the less efficient they're going to be. That is, again, not a good trend in my humble opinion. All right. So with that said, hopefully those, um, some, those insights were helpful in your starting point to analyze Knight's financial report. Uh, specifically for their financial statements and financial ratios. So if you'd like some more in-depth um, examination of Nike's financial statements, uh, check out my website, qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash Nike Financial Report. And on this website, I do sell two different guides, the Beginner's Guide to Nike Financial Analyst uh, 2021, um, that guide right there, I do not provide financial analysis to Nike's line items in the income statement balance sheet, nor do I give um, guidance for the financial ratios. I do provide that information, and I give you some general tips and tricks on how to begin your analysis. However, it's not specific to Nike. In Nike's financial report by myself, 2021, I do provide you all with the, inf with the income statement summarized, the balance sheet summarized, as well as calculations for Nike's financial ratios, the various financial ratios that are out there, um, five-year trends. I also do give you some insights and guidance as to you know, some of the trends that I identified when I analyzed the organization. All right, so hopefully this information was helpful. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And as always, have a great day. Thank you.